afternoon, hard rockers. Hopefully everybody's doing well, staying safe, and enjoying this wonderful weather that we're having outside. Um, first, I want to start off by uh, saying thank you to everyone for supporting Hard Rocker Athletics, supporting South Dakota School of Mines as an institution. All of our sponsors, our alumni, our community members, uh, we can't do what we do without your support. Uh, at noon today, uh, we will have a special uh, uh, unveiling of our new website. And I want to give a very special thanks to Brad Bloom, who, will, uh, who has designed it, done all the, the work and everything needed to, to get it to, to come up and go. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, a very special thank you to our medical staff. Uh, those individuals have been putting in a lot of time here. Uh, our coaches have been putting in a lot of time. They've been educating our athletes. They've been continuing with practices. Um, again, the, the number one priority for us is the mental and physical well-being of our scholar athletes. Uh, I want to thank uh, my staff, Brad, Anita, Cassie, uh, Seth, uh, and, and several others who have been working diligently and very hard to make Saturday's game go off without any, any hiccups because there's a lot of new things that are going to take place. Um, we are at capacity in the grandstand, which means we will not be selling general admission tickets to get into the grandstand. So the only way you're going to be able to see the football game live in person is going to be in the ramps. We have 25 ramp spots uh, available in A, 22 in B, and 13 in C. You can get a ramp spot by calling Anita at 605-394-2351, and each ramp spot will be um, capped at six tickets. Uh, so uh, get them while you can. They're going to go fast. Um, I'm hoping that by tomorrow we're going to be sold out and sold out of capacity. If you can't make it to the game, you can go to www.gorockers.com and watch Hard Rocker Football live on Stretch Internet. Um, that's all, I, all the updates that I have right now. I, I guess I can answer some questions if anybody has posted any or if Brad has some questions for me. Uh, can you, uh, will there be any special pricing on these uh, tickets, the available ramp passes, or are they, what, what's, how much do they cost? It'll be, uh, if you bought a, a season ramp spot, it is $100, plus you get two free tickets uh, at the gate. Uh, I believe it's going to be $50 per spot, plus the tickets. So buying ahead will save you money because you'll get two tickets. If you bought it ahead, uh, if you buy it at the gate, it'll cost you uh, the $50 plus you'll have to pay for all of your tickets. Okay. Um, I didn't really have any questions for you today, Joel. You uh, kind of answered everything uh, perfectly. Great. Uh, once again, I, I, I really truly 100% uh, appreciate all the support from everyone for Hard Rocker Athletics. Looking forward to kicking things off on Saturday, and hopefully we'll see everybody there and cheering on the Hard Rockers. Thank you. Today's a great day to be a Hard Rocker. Okay, thank you, Joel. Next up, we will have head coach of the football team, Charlie Floor, after this brief commercial break. We are curious. We are tenacious. We've got what it takes to change the world. As one of the nation's premier engineering, science, and technology universities, South Dakota Mines is at the forefront of what's next. We embrace challenges, we let our curiosity lead, and we build a confidence supported by teamwork and collaboration. From our beginnings as a mining school to our status today as a world-class engineering and science university, South Dakota Mines continues to transform our students, our communities, and our world. South Dakota Mines, advancing the frontier of innovation. Hello Hard Rocker Nation, this is Charlie Floor. want to talk a little bit about Hard Rocker football for this week. Obviously exciting time for us uh, within our program with it being game week. 
uh, in preparation for the 135th annual uh, Black Hills Brawl. Uh, been very proud of our kids and how they've showed up for practice all week long, uh, both mentally and physically, knowing that uh, it's also midterm week for us. Uh, they've came out every day in, in preparation for you know, trying to make our football team better. And, uh, you know, that, that's been a really exciting thing is, you know, we, met, we know we have a huge opponent in Black Hills State University, but we want to, you know, continue to make sure in, that we're putting strides out for our, our own football team and in, in getting better every day. Uh, this Saturday is also senior day for us. Uh, we're going to honor 10 seniors that will be playing their last season here at O'Hara Stadium on Dunham Field. Uh, so we want to make sure that you guys get out and see them in person as we honor those 10 seniors. Uh, this week, we also announced our, our six captains uh, for this season. Uh, Michael Retlin, Keontae Christian, Dominic Jackson, Ahmad Lewis, Jack Batho, and hometown favorite Ira Murphy. Uh, really proud of those six kids. Uh, those captains were selected by their teammates, and uh, we used kind of fall camp this year to uh, allow those guys to, and really our whole team, to, to show what leaders we had. Uh, I did our voting last week after our camp was essentially over and uh, those were the six kids that will represent our football team this year. So uh, really excited for those six individuals and, and watching them grow and uh, help me out with the leadership standpoint. So, you know, again, big week for us. Uh, really excited to, uh, you know, see everybody turn out on Saturday at five o'clock. And, you know, I know it's gonna be a very good football game and, uh, you know, we're, we're just really excited to get the opportunity to come out and play a football game this Saturday. So with that being said, Brad, I'll take any questions. Uh, first question I have, um, I think everybody wants to know, I mean, being a new uh, program, uh, uh, new coaching staff at School Minds and at uh, Black Hill State, can you tell us anything about what we might see from the Yellow Jackets this weekend? You know, a little bit about uh, our opponent this week, uh, you know, having a little bit of understanding of uh, Coach Bresky and, and what kind of program that he comes from. Uh, he's came from a lot of programs that have had a lot of success. Uh, as a player being from Black Hills, uh, then has went on and, and coached at a few other institutions, University of Sioux Falls and, and Lindenwood University where he came from last year. You know, he, he comes from winning. You know, he's, he's been in that same culture that uh, I've fortunately been in as well. And uh, I know his kids are going to come out and they're going to compete. They're going to play hard for, for 60 minutes. And obviously in a rivalry game, you wouldn't expect any different. Uh, they're going to be very well coached. Uh, you know, on the defensive side of the football, um, Jordan Brown was actually a, a former coach of, uh, for me at uh, Northwest Missouri State, uh, coming from Abilene Christian last year. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to do a lot of things that, uh, you know, we've seen on film from them. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's going to be, and then obviously, uh, you know, they're, with Coach Bresco being an offensive coach, uh, you know, very similar things to maybe what Lindenwood or, or Sioux Falls has ran those programs that he's been to. But, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, it's they're their own program. they got to look at their own personnel and, and see what they've got there at Black Hills. And, you know, and, and they have to do the same for us. And, and that's it's going to be one of those things we're going to, you know, kind of have a game plan uh, together, kind of feel one another out the, the first couple series and see what each team's given us and then be allowed to make some adjustments during the course of the game. And, and the great thing about it is, you know, we just, we got to get our kids to understand they got to be football players. You know, there's going to be things that maybe they haven't prepared for on film in all phases of the game, and they've just got to be smart, uh, you know, continue to communicate and, with their coaches and, and let everybody know what's going on and play fast and, and don't think. You just got to react. And uh, that's kind of the great thing about, you know, this football game is, you know, two, two programs uh, that have battled one another for, 134 years or 134 times and uh, you know that's that's why I'm really excited just an opportunity for our kids to go out and compete for 60 full minutes and uh, see where the cards lay. All right and this question just uh, emailed to me uh, how healthy are we right now? You know we, we are healthy you know I, I've been really proud of our kids they've done a, a phenomenal job of taking care of their bodies because uh, we have pushed them uh, it, within this fall camp with it kind of being an abbreviated season so you know, they've done a great job of taking care of their bodies, you know, eating right, hydrating right, you know, doing everything that they can to make sure we're at full capacity on Saturday afternoon. Okay, and uh, next question is, how challenging is it to get ready for BH given the current circumstances? You know, it's it's been a challenge, you know, just like I said before, trying to get ready for what they could potentially do. and. 
you know, we've really only spent uh, this week on them. We, we've tried to really focus on our program, trying to make sure that our kids are learning our schemes and having an understanding of what we're doing. And, you know, what, there's going to be some things, like I said, that they're going to do we haven't prepared for and, and vice versa. So we just got to continue to trust our fundamentals, trust our coaching, and come out and play with great attitude and effort every single play and just turn into football players and uh, learn through the course of the game we're going to have to make adjustments. All right, next question is, will we see a heavy dose of Ahmad Lewis again this season? <laughs> You know, obviously up front and uh, having a mob back, you know, that, that's something we're, you know, going to try and hang our hat on. You know, coming into a program, very blessed to uh, have a player like that with, within our program. Uh, Ahmad's been great. You know, he's, he's one of those kids that, uh, you know, has done a lot for, for the school and, and had an outstanding season last year. And, you know, he's going to, everybody knows he's going to be a playmaker uh, for us and has been. So, you know, we're going to have to do some things uh, to not only get him the ball and, and uh, but continue to look at our other other things. If they're taking him away, what other players are going to be able to step up and and make plays when we need it? But uh, you know, Ahmad's been great. You know, he, he we all kind of know, and I think they they're going to know the type of player that he is, and, and they're going to have a plan to shut him down. And you know, it'll be us our job as coaches to uh, continue to try and find ways to make plays. All right. Uh, next question comes from. Uh uh, Dr. Mann down the, down the hill, uh, he would like to know, would you discuss the competition for your starting quarterback on Saturday? Yeah, the, the competition at that position is, has been great. You know, uh, I'm really proud of those groups, that group specifically. Uh, you know, we've got really four guys uh, that have battled for that quarterback spot uh, all fall camp. Uh, the great thing about it is, is when they come into that meeting room, uh, they want to learn from one another. They want to compete with one another. You know, knowing that there's only going to be one quarterback on the field at a time, you know, they're, they're all competing hard for the spot, but they all know that it's going to take everybody in that room for our program to uh, continue to achieve at a, at a higher rate. And, uh, you know, they've, they've competed well on the field. Uh, you know, they've, they've gotten equal reps. Uh, we've tried to give them essentially our whole offense, all, all of those kids that are in that meeting room. And, you know, that's what I'm really looking forward to is, you know, finishing out this week. Uh, seeing those guys battle for the starting spot on Saturday afternoon and you know the great thing is we got a lot of kids that can go in and do that so you know if, if things aren't going the way we plan then uh, you know maybe make a few adjustments and uh, go from there. All right coach that was the last question I had for you. Um, final thoughts? You know the, the big thing for me is and I can't uh, it's, say it or stress it enough is, you know, our, our continued support that we've had here in Rapid City at South Dakota Mines and, and Hard Rocker Nation is, you know, we appreciate that every, everything that everybody's done for us in our program, uh, getting us to this point, uh, you know, and, and what I'm really looking forward to is, is showing up to the stadium at uh, about 2 o'clock and, and our fans and their fans out there enjoying the fall. You know, we're expecting a great Saturday afternoon. Uh, and, and we want everybody out there to experience it. And, uh, you know, this is something that's been uh, planned for a long period of time. And, uh, you know, just to see the genuine excitement of people here in Rapid City uh, going out and support their team, you know, whatever color it is that they're wearing, uh, just coming out and, and uh, supporting the game of football, watching our kids come out and compete hard for 60 full minutes and uh, trying to give you guys as good of a show as we can. And uh, that's probably the most exciting thing for me and our staff and the rest of our kids is just is showing up Saturday afternoon and giving everybody a great experience and uh, getting back to a little bit of normalcy. So look forward to seeing everybody out here at O'Hare Stadium and Dunham Field and uh, you know watching a great football game. Thank you very much and go Hard Rockers. All right, thank you coach. Uh, we will be back with uh, head coach Luke Wheeler from the golf room after this short commercial break. We are curious. We are tenacious. We've got what it takes to change the world. As one of the nation's premier engineering, science, and technology universities, South Dakota Mines is at the forefront of what's next. We embrace challenges, we let our curiosity lead, and we build a confidence supported by teamwork and collaboration. From our beginnings as a mining school, to our status today as a world-class engineering and science university, South Dakota Mines continues to transform our students, our communities, and our world. South Dakota Mines, advancing the frontier of innovation.
Good afternoon, Hard Rocker Nation. Luke Wheeler, Director of Golf, uh, coming to you live from the King Center. I am, just got back from Pueblo, Colorado, from the Farmer Insurance uh, Sam Prohl Invite, uh, hosted by Colorado State Pueblo. Uh, it was just a men's tournament these last couple days. Um, we did exceptionally well as a team. Uh, I'm very proud of the guys. Uh, all along this last year, this last spring, and this year, our goal is to start averaging 300 or less as a team. Uh, the first round on Monday morning, uh, we went out and shot 300. Um, I challenged the guys to let's break that uh, for the second round. Uh, they played 36 holes on Monday, and we uh, went out and shot a 291 uh, for the second round, uh, which is three over as a team. Uh, exceptional. Uh, they did great. Uh, Besides the fact that we had to stop because of darkness, um, we had one hole left, uh, we couldn't get it in, so we had to come back one Tuesday morning, bright and early, finish that up, wait for a couple more teams to finish their holes. We only had one, some schools had five, uh, due to all the COVID restrictions. We couldn't get paired with other schools, so we were out playing with each other um, as a group. So some schools took a little bit longer than others, but that's okay. We went out, shot 291 for the second round. Uh, then we challenged them again. Uh, we said, hey, let's break the 290. Uh, and, um, and lo and behold, they went out and shot 289 for the third round, uh, which is the best scores we've had since I've been here. Um, I haven't looked back in the history. I haven't had time. Uh, got back about 1 o'clock this morning. So... Uh, I'm going to go back, check it out, see what we're at for scores uh, in recent years. But I think that's pretty rakes up as the best tournament we've had in a long time. So uh, super proud of the guys, the way they competed. Um, two long days of travel, uh, playing, travel. Uh, it was a good, good tournament to end the fall on. So coming up, we have one more tournament left for the women. Uh, we've got to go back to Pueblo. Sunday morning, uh, we get up bright and early, get down there, play a practice round Sunday, uh, and then they have 18 holes on Monday, 18 holes on Tuesday, then get back in the van and come back, and then our fall will be wrapped up for our tournaments. Uh, we'll keep outside, play uh, practicing outside, excuse me, uh, until the snow flies. So um, golf's not over with. Uh, it's beautiful out right now. Couldn't ask for better weather than we have, and uh, just looking forward to ending the fall on a good note. All right, Coach, i got a couple questions for you. Um, what, play in that sort of format where you play together with uh, your teammates, what are the pros and cons of that, or are there one or the other? Well, the, obviously the pros are that you're going to be more relaxed, uh, obviously playing with each other all fall. Um, it, it, it's more or less like, to me, it was a practice round, uh, three rounds of practice round. Whether that's good or bad, um, to me, it, it's not college golf because you're, you're not in the heat of the moment. You're not in the heat of competition uh, playing with somebody from Pueblo or, or Westminster or Colorado Mines uh, in your group. So the, that was the cons of it. Um, you're hoping that everybody's on the up and up, uh, which um, I, I trust every coach that was with their groups. Um, there's upstanding guys, um, very... Uh, high integrity, so hopefully I didn't have to worry about that. Um, if you look at the at the scores, there is a low score shot. So um, obviously it probably helped a lot of a lot of teams being able to just uh, be more relaxed, playing with your teammates. Um, you know, you still had to follow the rules of not helping each other out, uh, not talking to each other about yardages, distances. Uh, what club selection, stuff like that, that can only come from the coach. Um, the only thing you guys, they could talk about with, amongst themselves about golf was the rules, you know, whether they can take a drop here or, you know, if this is a two-stroke penalty or where they can drop, uh, things like that. So it, it ran as smooth as it could go. Um, is it ideal? No. But did we get a tournament in during these crazy times? Yes, we did. In the, the, will that be the similar uh format for this coming weekend? Yes, yep, the women will be the same. Uh, Pueblo uh, is running a very, very strict uh, COVID restrictions down there. They're lucky to even get the tournaments in. So 
Uh, Coach Koshke is doing all he can to make sure everything is uh, running as smoothly as possible down there. All right, and then just um, kind of uh, assessing the, the men's uh, fall season, um, what, uh, what were some of your um, um, takes from it as far as were you pleasantly surprised with a few of your younger golfers? or You know, we're, we're a very young team, um, and I was very happy the way we progressed through the fall, um, not really knowing what to expect. I knew I brought some good kids in, and they were going to get paired up with uh, the returners that were good. Uh, so uh, I was looking for a good fall, uh, and we just got better and better and better each day, each tournament. Um, now they they got a, they got a taste of what it what it's like to shoot those scores down uh, as low as we did this weekend. Um, but they also saw where we need to get to uh, to start competing in the conference. So it's we got to take advantage of our opportunities and minimize our mistakes. Um, to get to where we need to be. But uh, overall, with the fall with the men, um, very proud of them, very pleased, and looking for a good off season um, in the indoors here once the weather starts turning. Uh, get some good conditioning going, uh, using a track man through Christmas, uh, January, February, and then get rolling again in March. All right, Coach, uh, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll visit with you again next week. All right, sounds good. Thank you. We are curious. We are tenacious. We've got what it takes to change the world. As one of the nation's premier engineering, science, and technology universities, South Dakota Mines is at the forefront of what's next. We embrace challenges. We let our curiosity lead, and we build a confidence supported by teamwork and collaboration. From our beginnings as a mining school to our status today as a world-class engineering and science university, South Dakota Mines continues to transform our students, our communities, and our world. South Dakota Mines, advancing the frontier of innovation. All right, well, it's good to be back here, guys. Uh, we are uh, looking forward to a little bit of a weekend off. We went down to Shadron this last weekend. It was a pretty good day for us. Uh, we knew that Shadron was going to be much improved over what they did a couple weeks ago, and they didn't didn't disappoint. Uh, it was really, really good competition for us. Uh, one of the advantages that we have when we go down there is that we've run that course quite a few times. Uh, it's pretty much a, an annual thing for us at this point, so it feels a lot like a home course. and. Uh, so that means that, that we have a pretty good idea of how to run that course as well in order to be successful. And one of the things we've seen over the years is that a key is a strong first mile. That first mile really, really dictates your, your chances for success in that race. And so we set up our, our strategy around that. Uh, also with the, the idea that when we go down to our max, we're going to have to get out a little bit faster than what we might do otherwise. Uh, so. It's one of those that it kind of worked out well. It gave us a chance to practice something that we needed to practice and at the same time set, us up, set ourselves up for success. Uh, so we were able to get out hard. Tim Dunham wound up uh, winning the race wire to wire. Oh. Uh, and uh, he really put a good effort in. Uh, his second half of the race really, really stretched things out and, and got a chance to see him put some good work in. Uh, that, that second half of the course is uh, either up or down, and, and it's, uh, there's a, about a mile long climb in there at one point. Uh, and so it's a, it's a pretty tough second half of the course, and he really managed to pull away from the field and wound up winning the race by about 45 seconds. So pretty impressive effort, and uh, he was recognized on Monday with the RMAC Athlete of the Week because of it. Uh, so that was, that was pretty exciting. And then uh, following him up pretty closely were uh, Monty, uh, Monty Christ out there in Singleton and Brett Flerchinger uh, bringing in our, our two, three, four spots for us this weekend. And man, it's really nice having such a strong pack. Um, you know, we were able to, to put up just 20 points on Shatter, which is uh, just a really, really solid score. And, and uh, this is probably one of the deepest groups, deepest teams that we've had on the men's side since the early 90s. So it's a really exciting time to see, see these guys go after it. 
On the women's side, we took a really similar approach, uh, and the women, uh, they were a little nervous about the idea of getting on a little bit faster, but, uh, but when race time came around, they really embraced it, and they went after it. And uh, we knew Shadwin returned a couple of really strong runners, so we said, okay, we're just gonna try and, we're gonna try and surround them early and make sure that we've got all our scores right around them. And, uh, and they were able to do that right away. Uh, came through the mile with, with a good pack right there at the front. Uh, we had a five runners right around their top two. And uh, we got broken up a little bit on the backside of the course where it gets, where it gets into that big climb. But, uh, but by then, the damage had already been done. We had things pretty well sewed up. And uh, Taylor Bright had a fantastic day. She looked, uh, looked absolutely lights out. Uh, she was wearing her Wonder Woman socks, so we were joking around afterwards that she was just, she was just flying around the course in her invisible plane, and uh, so she, uh, she got her first career win and uh, really set the tone for us going into the Armax. Uh, most of our runners saw two to three minute PRs on the course, uh, and uh, specific to that course, in fact. So that should set us up really well going into Armex. That means we're running, running really strong right now, and uh, we're excited to see what happens when we get down to the Springs on uh, October 24th. <clears throat> okay, Coach Johnson, I have a few questions for you. Um, how does the uh, Shattering course compare to the course that you're going to see at uh, Colorado Springs, uh, despite the elevation? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. Honestly, I've not actually been on that course. I know parts of the course uh, because it's uh, it's down at Monument Valley Park, uh, and uh, and it crosses onto parts of the Santa Fe Trail as well. And so, I know it's going to be a really fast course. There's going to be a little bit of hills to it. Uh, probably n not the climbs, the length of the climbs that we saw at Shattern, but uh, but it should run very similar. It should run very fast. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I have found out is that uh, the start is going to be very similar to what we saw at Shattern, where it's going to narrow down very quickly into into a narrower trail. So getting out strong is going to be really critical there. And uh, do you see all the RMAC schools that are still participating? Are they all going to be there? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Uh, I haven't heard anything to the contrary. I think at this point everybody's kind of setting up for that, and uh, and we're looking to have a good. Good competition. As far as I know, there's 13 teams that are competing, planning to compete at the RMAC this year. Okay, and last question for you. Uh, uh, given it's a, a shortened season, uh, do you is there more pros or more cons to to that as you approach this this final meet? You know, that's a great question. Uh, there there are some things that are good about it. You know, one of the nice things is is that it allows you to make a little bit cleaner transition for our kid, for our freshmen who are coming in. Typically around here, their high school seasons are, are two to three weeks shorter than what we would normally run. So it's kind of nice to, to ease them into things a little bit. And uh, I think has allowed them to stay a little bit healthier as we, as we get into the home stretch here. Uh, on the downside, you know, I think one of the, one of the tough parts about it, especially this year is, is just as uh, we see some some movement in and out of the team with uh, with some things on campus and and with you know there's always some injuries that crop up here and there. There's not as much time to get people back from things, and so it definitely makes it a little bit more challenging to to try and get people back and and ready to go. So it means that we have to do a better job when when we're uh, when we're in our cross training and things like that, and making sure that we're staying healthy and doing the right things. All right, uh, Coach Johnson, thank you, and uh, we will see you in a couple weeks, and good luck at uh, the RMAC Championships. All right, thank you.